What's going on guys? In this video, we're going to create two new components in React where we're going to perform GraphQL queries using two different hooks provided by the Apollo library. Remember to share, like, and subscribe to the channel and let's get started. This is the GraphQL server that we've been using in the past four videos. And basically we have videos, we have users. The user is the author of the video and we have queries to get the list of existing videos. We have mutations, we have subscriptions. We already created subscriptions, mutations, and now we're going to perform queries using this server that is running on port 8080. Now let's go to the React project. Okay, I'm going to create a new component here. I'm going to call it video list. I'm going to import a few libraries from here. And I'm going to create a constant. This will be the query to get the list of existing videos. Paste it here. So here I get the list of videos. I get the identifier, title, the URL, and the ID, and the name of the author of the video. Okay, let's create the functional component. This will be video list. And I'm going to create an arrow function for this. And I'm going to export this function. Export default video list. Okay, now I'm going to use a hook provided by this library, the Apollo React Hooks library. So I'm going to create a constant. And here I'm going to receive three values, loading, error, and data. And here I'm going to use the use query hook. Move this. And here I need to pass the query that I define here. And here I'm going to handle all these values. I'm going to use something similar to this. Yes. I'm going to grab this from here. And here I'm going to return a table with the list of videos. I'm going to create a div and within this div, I'm going to add this table and I'm going to create a header for the table. I'm going to create a title. the video list and here I'm going to create the columns for this list of videos and I'm going to have the first column would be the identifier the second one will be the title of the video the third one will be the URL of the video and the last one will be the author of the video. And within the body of the table, I'm going to iterate over the values that I receive here. Okay, this is our case. And here it would be call span. And we have four columns here, so this will be four. Here I'm going to use the map function, data.videos.map. And here I'm going to use a narrow function. So the map function receives the value that is the element of this array. And for each of these elements, I'm going to create a new row in this table. So table row, I need to add a key. And here I'm going to use the ID of the video, video.id. 
and here I need what the four values for the identifier of the video, the title, the URL, and the author of the video. The pro is will be video dot id, and I'm going to copy this. This will be title. The next one will be URL, and the last one will be the author. Let's use the name. So this will be video dot author dot name okay and here i'm going to add some styles i'm using this pure css library so i'm going to grab these two classes and i'm going to paste those classes here this will be class name and i'm going to paste those here and i'm going to add some other styles to center this table and i'm going to create a class for this div this will be list and I'm going to paste some styles here. And here we have the style that we're going to use for the div. And this will be the style for the table. So let's go back. Okay, and before running this, we need to add the component here. So this will be video list. Let's import this. Okay, and now let's run this. npm start. And I'm going to create a new video. Let's create the video. And as we can see here, the list of videos is empty because it's not going to refresh automatically. If we refresh the page, now we have the elements here. Something is wrong, so I'm going to fix that. Oh yeah, this is still it's not table row. Now, so we need to refresh explicitly the page to show the value here. So, how can we fix this in this case? We can pass a poll interval, so it's going to call the server given the interval that we define here. Poll interval, and let's say that we assign 100 milliseconds. So if we go back and if we create another video here, we're going to see that it's going to refresh automatically. If we create another one, we're going to see that it's going to refresh automatically again. So this is going to call the server every 100 milliseconds. Okay, now let's go back and let's create a new component. I'm going to copy this component and I'm going to adapt it to use another hook. So I'm going to call it lazy video list. We're going to use the use lazy query hook. We're going to make a few changes here. This will be lazy video list. I'm going to export this function here. And this will be use lazy query. This is the hook that we are going to use in this case. We don't need to pass any parameters here. Basically, this hook will be used to perform this query on demand. So we are going to create a button. And when we click on the button, it's going to call the function that returns here. Here returns first is the function that we are going to call when we click on the button. I'm going to call it get videos. This needs to be like this. And this also returns the loading function, loading, and the data. And I'm going to import this hook here. And I'm going to remove this. And here, I'm going to check if there is no data, then I'm going to show a button where I can ask for the data. And in any other case, I'm going to show the list of videos. So here, this will be a button. And I'm going to handle the onClick event. And this will be an arrow function where I'm going to call this function, the getVideos function. This is the difference between use query and use lazy query. With use query, is going to execute that function right away. 
and with use lazy query is going to return this callback, this get videos function, and we can call this function when we perform some specific action here. For example, clicking a button. So here I'm going to add a label, let's say get videos. Okay, now let's add this component here. So this will be lazy video list. And now let's go back to the browser. And here, as we can see, we have this button here, this get videos. And if I click here on get videos, we get the list of existing videos. I'm going to refresh. Again, we have here this table where we use the use query hook. And here with this button, we call the function that is returned by the use lazy query hook. If I click here again, I get the list of existing videos. So that's all I have for today. Thank you guys for watching and I see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.